Hello, my name is Chris Kiek with Kiek Technology Solutions. In this video today, I'm going to try to go through a prototype I've been working on related to handling revised ABM workflows and Tecla structures to Tecla PowerFab. So I've got uh, a job here that is a uh, stick framed, no connections, point to point at center line of steel. So center line of beam and center line of column. And uh, I have prefixed the steel here in the part properties for the assembly number to where this has got a uh, 1B and 1C prefix. So that way uh, that signifies sequence one steel and that'll get different ABM and piece marks from the sequence two steel here, which you can see is prefixed with 2B and 2C. Now what I'm gonna do uh, is if I actually inquire on one of these parts, you're gonna see that there's no piece marks uh, that have been assigned. Uh, so you see this question mark in here. And so when all the stick framing is done, the detailer is gonna check this, make sure the sizes, locations, and everything are correct. And then what they'll do is they'll perform numbering and they'll not uh, number modified objects. What that does is it's going to compare all the parts uh, in the model and it's gonna give the quantities and piece marks to those based on all the pieces that are the same. So now that I've actually done that, if I came up here to the custom inquiry at the upper right, I can click on this column for instance and it shows me that this is 1C1 and there's a lot of those 1C1s. And then over here in sequence two, this is 2C1 and then 2B1, et cetera. And then 1B1, 1B2 over here in sequence uh, one compared to sequence two. So the next thing though, is that if I click on this piece, um, if you want those piece marks to actually be written as ABM marks, then you need to save those to this preliminary mark field. And that's going to be this field right here. And that's what comes across into PowerFab as the reference number or the ABM mark. Now, what we'll do is we'll select the steel that we want to save those preliminary marks on, go to numbering settings, and we'll say save preliminary numbers. And when I do that, it takes the current piece mark in the model, and then it will write that to that user-defined attribute. Now, the danger here is that because it's an exposed user-defined attribute, and there are ways to hide attributes and things like that, but um, you know here it's exposed. So if the user modifies any other user-defined attribute and they don't remember to uncheck the checkboxes, they could accidentally overwrite this or clear it out or take one piece as user-defined attribute for a prelim mark and apply it all over the place. And that would be bad. Like that would be very confusing to you as the fabricator if you're getting a revised ABM or something like that. So there is a little bit of risk in Tecla structures where the detailer can accidentally mess these up or worse yet, when they do a revision, they forget to modify or change those. And so that's kind of part of the challenge. Now I'm gonna come back to that. So I'm just gonna generate the actual ABM now. Uh, so to do that, I give the fabricator a couple things. Um, and that's what I'm trying to prove out in this workflow. So I'm gonna go to reports and I've got two different reports here. One that's ABM summary. And I'm gonna to go to options and I'm gonna say, uh, let's open up this report with associated viewer. And what I'll do is I'll say ABM summary and then I'm just gonna say for, uh, actually let's see. I'll leave that at uh, ABM summary, but I'm just gonna say rev zero, like that summary. And then that way I know that this is the first one that I'm running. So I'm gonna go ahead and say create from selected. And then that'll actually open up in Excel here. And you can see that it gives me a total quantity of all of the prelim marks. Uh, what sequence everything's in, uh, there's the quantity, there's the name, and then uh, although the name doesn't really matter, it just helps kind of the purchasing agent understand columns versus beams if they want to nest those differently. Usually they're different uh, shapes and sizes anyway, but just in case. And then I have the profile, material grade, uh, length and feet, as well as the length and in inches. So here the purchasing agent can use this to actually uh, do a, uh, you know, either a mill run or nest this and uh, compare it to getting something from the service center or the warehouse. Um, but let's say that they're gonna try to do a mill run on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that down. And that is part of the deliverable that I would give the fabricator. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to run this comparison report and I'm gonna call this also Rev0. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna be a little bit different. Instead of it being summarized by quantity, every single individual piece has a unique identifier or what's called a GUID, globally unique identifier. So every instance of a steel, even if it's exactly the same, is going to get its own unique identifier, which is exactly what we're seeing here. And this should never change or never repeat across models um, or even within the same model that is truly a unique identifier for each piece. Now, the reason why we want this is because I'm gonna use that GUID as a mechanism to detect any changes. And this will allow me to find out whether any new steel has been added whether anything has been modified based on its GUID, like so any of these properties that have changed, even though this GUID will never change with the life of that object in the model. 
And then uh, also detect deletions. So if any new GUIDs appear, that means it's new steel after I've run this report. If anything is not in the model after this report, then that means it must be deleted. So it's missing, a GUID is gone. And then if it's the same GUID, like the same part, but just some of the properties change, and that will be considered modified. And we'll come back to that. So the fabricator themselves, they may not use this direct report like you see it, but it's gonna come in handy in the tool that I'm about to show you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this down. I've got those two reports and let's just go to the model folder here. And that opens that up. I'll go inside of reports and there's my uh, two files there that I just created. Now I'm gonna copy these and put them into my submittals folder. So this is what I would give to the fabricator. And I know I'm doing uh, two submittals here uh, for comparison purposes. So I'll just put that in here. And now I've got the starting point, but I want one other thing that I need here. So back in that other folder, I had this uh, reports, uh, this ABM comparison, like in the reports folder. And uh, this is a tool I've written. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just go ahead and grab that comparison report, that rev zero and say open. And it says parts loaded here. Now there's no new parts yet because I haven't done any revisions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply say save updated ABM. And what this is gonna do is it's going to generate an XML file. So I'm just gonna call this ABM rev zero. And I'll save that in this uh, same reports folder where my model is. So let's say save. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because the Tecla PowerFab export in Tecla structures cannot be uh, read, you know, written out. You can't create the XML, which uh, the XML is great for using in production control in PowerFab to get a more detailed uh, change management list and uh, production control than say the combining module. And so uh, that's why I'm trying to get this XML. But typically you can't get an XML of just selected objects from the Tecla PowerFab export here that's out of the box in Tecla because this selected from model option does not allow you to just choose selected objects if there's no drawings in the document manager associated to those. So that's part of the limitation. And I may not want the all option because then that may grab stuff that I don't want to include in the ABM package. And so that's why that's unfortunately not necessarily the best option here either. Although this all option will export the steel even if the drawings aren't there, but it just grabs everything in the model and you may not want certain things to be exported. So that's why I'm not using this. And I'm also not using a KISS file. So if I did export, uh, you could do a, either an IFC file uh, if you wanted to bring that into the combining module, or I could do a uh, MIS and just go to KISS. And that's the other mechanism. The limitation with KISS though is that it's purely based on piece marks and I don't have the GUIDs in there to do a comparison. Whereas the XML that I just exported uh, using my tool, it does have actually uh, the GUIDs in there that we just saw in that comparison report. So I'm gonna close the tool down for a second and then I'm just gonna go to back to opening up my model folder. I'll then go to reports and there is uh, that ABM Rev Zero XML that I just uh, grabbed. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and I'm gonna put that into my submittals package here and that will then go over to the fabricator. And we're gonna import that ABM Rev Zero into a production control job. Okay, so now I'm over here in Tecla PowerFab. I'm gonna go to production control. I've already created a production control job, but I just wanna open it up and show you that there's no materials in there. So it's completely empty. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to file and then I will go to import. Now what I'm gonna do is you're gonna see that the XML is here as an option underneath production control jobs, but I cannot do that on a combining module, only IFC and KISS. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do a production control job just because I get a little bit more detailed and automated updating and things like that related to the imports and a little bit more control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select on this and then I will browse to that file. So I'm just gonna go here to my models. So C, Tecla Structures Models, ABM Comparison. I'll go to my submittal package that I'm submitting to the fabricator. There's that first package and there's the ABM Rev Zero. So I'll go ahead and select on that and I'll just go ahead and say import. All right, so I'm gonna import that into this particular production control job that I had just shown you. I'm gonna say add and replace to add all those objects. Now, I'm gonna say no to this just so you can see the mappings. So um, for some reason, in the exports from Tecla Structures for PowerFab, I noticed that the assembly length is written as a different unit than the uh, part lengths are. 
Uh, it's kind of strange. I don't know why that's that way, but I'm going to ignore mapping this assembly length. Um, assembly name, you know, you may want to come in here and actually set that as the, uh, maybe the remark column if you want to see that and know what's uh, the difference between beams and columns after import. So maybe you'll do that and set that field mapping. And then the phase name or the phase number, you might want to set that as the sequences so that way you can actually kind of um, segregate the steel by that if you need to nest those uh, separately. So we can just say phase name there, for instance, to sequence, and then we'll just say okay. And this is just uh, giving me a message about NC1 files, which there shouldn't really be anything here. Now here's what's great. So this is giving me that uh, change summary, and it's just showing that this is an add. All of this steel is going to be added in here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say continue on with the import. And it's just saying that, hey, there's no CNC files with this import, and I'm like, no problem. I've got all of those pieces there. I didn't see any kind of errors or anything going on with that. So we'll close that down. We'll then go to production control and let's take a look at the bill material import and just compare it to what I actually saw from my uh, bill material export from Tecla Structures. Okay, so now when I look at the uh, Excel spreadsheets and I compare it, it looks like uh, exactly the same thing. So I've got all my sequence information and everything that came across, um, which I can actually see that here at the lower right. So you can see the quantity in that sequence. So here, this is 100 sequence and then there's 20 of those in there. But if I look at the total quantities, everything in here compared to the piece marks matches exactly what I see in EPM. So that's good, we have success. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some changes and then I'm gonna see what happens. So while the purchasing agent is actually uh, doing the combining and nesting of all of that steel that I gave them and putting in a mill order, um, now what I'm doing is I've got a new design revision that's come in as the detailer and I need to go ahead and make those changes. And so I'm gonna be modeling here in sequence 100 and I'll go to the steel tab. I'll activate my beam command here. And let's say for instance, I'm missing a beam that's going in between here. That needs to be input. And then let's say that I'm gonna delete these two infill beams. So I'll get rid of those. And uh, let's change one of these columns. Let's change the size. Let's change that to a W12 by 53. So we'll modify that. And then um, let's also, so we did an addition, we did a modification, two deletions. And then let's actually also connect a few of these up just to kind of show you what I was talking about related to applying connections. Or let's just say that uh, detailing is really getting far along and we will auto connect this real quick. So let me just go up here to components and uh, let's do shear tabs all over the place. So say shear tabs. That'll go through and auto connect everything and then maybe base plates and stuff like that are gonna be applied, which will shorten up the columns for the thickness of the base plate because uh, the anchor bolts and things like that are next. So I wanted you to see that, you know, I've got, I got all these connections in, so it's making all of the parts shorter, okay? And so I gotta watch out for that because I don't really care about that from an ABM revision point of view. And that can be very confusing when importing into PowerFab if a bunch of things got shorter or piece marks have changed but the prelim marks and the original point to point lengths have not really changed. So that's something that we wanna keep an eye on. All right, so we've got a new piece of steel, two deleted pieces of steel, one modified, which is gonna cause a quantity change. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to do a revised ABM and see what happens. Okay, so the first thing here is that I'm going to want to only do an export on the ABM of the stuff that I care about. I don't care about the connection material. The shop doesn't want that. So what I'll do is I'll come in here to my selection filters and um, I've got a sequence one ABM and uh, let's actually just make that do sequence one and two. And I'll just say apply here. And now uh, this is only gonna filter out wide flange, HSS and channel steel and uh, anything that's really the main part, although I may not necessarily want that. So I'll, I'll apply that there. Let me just window around all that and make sure I'm not getting connection material. Awesome, I'm not getting connection material or, or bolts or anything like that. So that looks really good. So I'm just gonna say apply on that and then I'm gonna go back and run those reports. So we'll just go to drawings and reports and we'll select on first the ABM summary and we'll just call that, uh, let's see, I think I did ABM rev zero before and now I'll do rev one and I'll just say create from selected. And there is the summary. Okay, so everything looks pretty good there. We've got all of our piece marks and everything. And then, uh, and I believe I ran numbering, let me just make sure. So I'm gonna run numbering just in case. And, uh, and then I'll say create from selected. Now, nothing should have really happened there with the numbering uh, because this mark is not the piece mark. Uh, this is really the ABM mark. And I didn't save preliminary marks or anything like that. So nothing has really changed here. 
Now this might be actually an issue because I have a couple of pieces of steel that I modeled in that, uh, or one piece that was new, and then there's also a couple pieces that are deleted and there's one that changed. So look at here, this is actually kind of bad in this report. See how there's a 1C1 and there's a quantity of 11 and then there's a quantity of one. You should almost never see this where there's two lines in this report that have the same mark. That actually tells you you have a bad prelim mark, but we'll come back to that. So I'm gonna close that down. Then I'm gonna run the comparison and I'll call that rev1 underscore. And that's gonna basically be all of the steel with the GUID in it for this current version of the job. And the reason why I need to run the whole job or the whole sequence, like if I was gonna do lots of different separate ABMs by sequence, I still have to select all of the steel in the sequence. So that way, when I do my comparison tool, I can look and see what's been deleted as well as what's new versus just modified like something that's in both files. So I'm gonna close that down once I've got that there. Now I've got my two reports there and let's just say that I'm processing this along. So I'll open up my model folder and then I'll go to uh, the reports folder here and I can just take the rev ones and I can copy those and I can put them into my submittal package folder. So I'll go to my submittals folder and here's my rev ones and I can just put that in there. So now I've got the submittal content and everything set. But let's just see if everything is uh, looking good here and it's gonna work. So I'm gonna go to my ABM comparison tool. I'll press the original parts and I'm in that model folder in the reports folder and I'll select the rev zero comparison and it says parts loaded. Then I'll go to the rev one comparison, parts loaded. And then I'll say compare. Ooh, wow, okay. I'm a little bit surprised by what I see here. So let's see what I got. So there's a lot of quantity change um, notifications, which might be misleading. It's just kind of telling you every instance of that piece mark because there's a unique GUID on each one of these. It looks like there's more that's re that's been revised than really is, but it's just saying that there was this piece mark of 1C1, and here you can see it, exactly like I was saying uh, when I looked at the summary report. There was a quantity of 12, and now there's a quantity of 11, and it's just telling me that all of the 1C1s, hey, there's been a quantity change like in that uh, piece mark. So here I've got something that says bad P uh, ABM mark on it. I'm gonna click on that and see what's going on. So, ah, okay. So this is telling me that, hey, this is a 1C1, uh, it was a 1C1, it's still a 1C1, but now it's got a different profile, but it's still called 1C1, and that's bad. I don't wanna send that to the fabricator. That would actually be confusing. So I need to fix that. So I need to go find that column, and I need to fix that. And that was this one right here, right? This is that 12 by 53. So I'll go to user defined attributes, and this cannot be 1C1 anymore. So this is the kind of stuff that I'm saying, like, you know, just for fabricators to understand, that, uh, hey, you know, the detailer could take this current piece mark and they could save the preliminary marks for this. That would be just fine. It would get that piece mark. But, uh, you know, it's based on whatever the current numbering is after all the connections and the piece marking has, you know, been applied here for everything from a detail point of view, not just from an ABM point of view. So I know that there's no other ones like this, but this is where the detailer's got to say, like, hmm, are there other piece marks like this or should I just give it a new ABM mark? So purchasing just sees this as a totally new piece. And that's probably what I'll do. So uh, I'm actually gonna go back into my folder. I'm gonna go back and look at the Rev1 summary. And let me just look at uh, the latest piece marks. So I've got that 1C1, then there's a 2C1, and I'm in sequence one. So when I look at the one marks, it looks like 1C2 is my next available mark uh, that I should probably use here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna close this down, and then I'll go back into the model, and I'll uncheck all the check boxes, and I'll change this to 1C2, because that's the next available mark. I'll go ahead and say modify, and now that should take care of that bad mark issue. Now let me just go back before I do anything else and just see what else is going on. Uh, one beam was deleted here, and then it looks like another beam is deleted, and that makes sense. Those are the two beams that I deleted. Now what I should have seen though is that I should have seen a new beam come across here um, that I had actually included, and so I should see new steel, and I'm surprised that I actually don't see that. So I'm gonna figure out what's going on with that. I'll run numbering again, run the exports, and I'll do the comparison report, and let me just see what the differences are. So let's go ahead and say perform numbering, and then I will select on all of the steel again. We'll go ahead and go back to our reports. We'll say ABM comparison, and we'll just do rev one. Create from selected. There's that report. And now I don't have that C, whoop, I still have that C1, hmm. Oh, this is the ABM comparison, makes sense, sorry. Everything is a unique quantity of one, sorry about that. So that looks good. And then here for the summary, that should not have 
that is one C one twice. So we'll say rev one summary, great from selected. And let's open that up and take a look. And uh, sure enough, there we go, one C one. And then now we have a one quantity of one, one C two. And that shows us that we're in good shape there. All right, so let me close this down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and run the, the summary report again. So we'll go into our model folder and we'll go to the reports folder. And I will run the ABM comparison. I'll go ahead and load up the Rev0 comparison. I'll now load the updated Rev1 comparison and I'll say compare. And now I don't have the bad mark, so that's good. Everything's really in good shape there. So let me just look at the quantity change. Yep, this went from a quantity of 12 to 11. And uh, so we have one piece in here that was modified and that's this uh, line item here, this one C2. So we can see that that is a basically a new stick of steel that we essentially need to purchase because the profile has changed. And this went from a quantity of 12 to a quantity of one and now has a new piece mark. So technically, you know, this is just showing modified because it's saying what it was. It was an existing piece in the model and now it became this. But from a purchasing uh, standpoint and point of view, I'm actually going to be purchasing a new stick of steel. And then this W16 by 50 actually needs to become available um, in my inventory. And uh, either I sell that back or see if I can stop the order and delivery of that steel from the mill. Um, or I just basically need to figure out what I'm going to do or put it back in stock to be used on another job. All right, so we've got the two deleted. Uh, the only thing that I'm not seeing in here is the new. So I'll have to take a look and see what's going on with that. Oh, okay, so I think I found the culprit. For some reason, my selection filter is not letting me get it. So that's why it was never selected when I ran the reports. So I need to kind of figure out what's going on with that. So let's see, uh, part prefix starts with one or two, and that must be the problem. So let me just turn this off for a second, this filter. Let me go back into that beam, and sure enough, that's it. I just had a bad prefix here, so I'll just modify that, 1B. And then I'll go ahead and say perform numbering. And then let's actually just turn this back on and make sure that I can grab that now. There we go, that looks good. So let me do this one more time. But you know, it's kind of good when I show mistakes because this, this shows you the kind of stuff that you gotta deal with if you do not have an automated mechanism for doing your revised ABMs and Tecla structures. So what I'm gonna do is I've, I've got everything selected and we'll run all of those reports and everything one more time. So I'll go back up here, go to ABM comparison. I'll just say rev one, and we'll say create from selected. Okay, so there's that. We'll do the summary and we'll just say rev one, create from selected. And there we go, looks good, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close that and let's just open up the model folder again. So we'll say open model folder and we'll go to reports and we'll run the ABM comparison tool. We'll load up the original parts, the new parts, which I just ran again and we'll say compare. And there we go, there's the new beam. So I'm actually glad I uh, paid attention and, and was like, why am I missing that? Something's wrong here. And so there we go. Now I've got that new piece of steel in there. It shows up as green. We've got the one modification, uh, which is gonna be a deletion on that other side. So we just need to pay attention to that. So one C2 is gonna be an issue. And then I guess the other thing here too with this new steel is that uh, you'll kind of catch that I did not put an ABM mark on this. So I probably should actually go back. I'm not gonna show you me running this again, but I'll probably go back, add that, that additional mark in there, and then uh, just make sure I'm good to go. So let me just find out in sequence one, what's my next available mark? Well, what will I do? I'll go to my ABM Rev1 summary, and I can see that I've got uh, 1B1, 1B2, 1B3, and so it looks like 1B4 is my next available mark. So I'll close that down. I'll just go back in here to where that new beam is. And uh, if I wanted to find anything that I missed the marks on, I actually have a filter here for ABM empty mark. And when I window around, uh, it's gonna show all that like some material steel, but then it's also got uh, this beam here that's missing that mark. So I'll just come in here. I'll uncheck all the check boxes. I'll go to preliminary mark and I'll just say one B4. And I'm unchecking all the check boxes. So only this field gets modified when I press the modify button and everything else gets ignored. So this is gonna be one before. I'll go ahead and say modify, and then I'll cancel so that way that uh, that number is not applied for the next new beam I put in the model. But then now we should be good to go. And I will go run my reports one more time and show you the comparison, and then we should be good to go. Okay, so now that I've rerun those reports again, I'm gonna go back to original parts and new parts, compare, and uh, there we go. So we've got our modification, 
that looks right. And it has changed marks, so we're good to go there. We've got the two deletions, and we need to get, remember that. So there's a one B, there's quantity of two of these. So if you see two lines, it's each instance of these got deleted. So even though it says a quantity of one, it's just that's a quantity of one of that specific instance. Um, so two of these got deleted. And then going down here, now there is a mark for this, 1B4, so that's good. We have a prelim mark and we're all good there. So we got one new stick of steel that we're gonna watch out for. We have one modified, which uh, decreased the quantity. And again, that should go from 20 to, let's see, this says 18, and that's the beams. That's because I deleted those, right? And then this is on the columns is going from quantity of 12 to quantity 11. So that makes sense. So we're gonna, we're gonna remember that. Now, I've done this comparison. And what's important is I do not want unnecessary changes to go over to PowerFab, meaning all of the beams that were in the original parts, they all got shorter on the new uh, summary. If I actually side by side, um, let's say here the Rev1 summary. So watch this, let me just show you. If I put that up here and then I do the Rev0 summary and just show that like right next to it. You'll see here that look at this like uh you know there's more pieces kind of going on because we have added like some different quantities but you're going to see like lots of repeats in here because of just things simply getting shorter right and because of connections but they were the same before like see how they were this quantity of 20 before and there's quantity of 18 now because i deleted two of them but this is the kind of thing is like i don't want the fabricator to see this revision like this doesn't matter to them from an ABM point of view. This is still going to be 1B1 and I don't want them to care about that or to have to worry about it. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to send them the new uh, ABM summary uh, or I may send it to them so they can see it. But from the import point of view for this XML, here's what I'm going to do. My tool is going to take, uh, it's going to take a combination of the original parts and then anything that's truly a revision from the new parts that I care about from an ABM point of view, then I will include that as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just say save updated XML and that this is going to be Rev1 and it'll keep the same length of what the Rev zeros were unless they got longer, right? Or unless the profiles change and something is truly changed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say save. And then now that new XML is there and then I can move this off to the side just so I can keep that for reference. And now I'm gonna go back to PowerFab and show you what it's gonna look like on the import. All right, so I'm over here in Tecla PowerFab and I have not practiced this, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna see and I'm hoping I get a match. Um, I did actually attempt to put uh, combine the steel and put it on a uh, requisition. So I hope I actually did that. And so I'm assuming that I'm gonna see some sort of notification that I've done that. I didn't actually purchase or put the material in inventory, but I just made a requisition to, to kind of show some sort of nest. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna go to import. And then I will select the XML and actually let me pick that as the option first. And then um, here it should allow me to do the Rev1, uh, which let me actually just go get that. I forgot to put that in my submittals folder. So I put it in the reports folder, but let me just uh, copy that and put that into my submittals folder. And so now as the fabricator, this is what I would have gotten. I would have seen there's this Rev1 in this particular submittal. That's awesome. So I'll select that and press open. And then I'll just go ahead and say import. We'll select the job number that we're importing into and we'll say save. And I'm gonna do add and replace. Now, it uh, looks like here it's just again saying this, I probably should have saved that away. So I'm gonna say no, just to look at this one more time. And here again, I might, uh, and watch this. I'm gonna go back to remark. And what do I got set here? I got the sequence set and then maybe I'll actually do this as well. So that way I can just use this. We'll just go to remark, there we go. And uh, I think I'm okay. And it's gonna ask me to save that so I don't have to do that again. So there we go, looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, save import type changes. Yes, for Tecla ABM, looks good. Save that, there's no NC1 files. And uh, here we go, look at this, there's some changes. There's some stuff going on, right? Um, and there is some steel that I've already actually kind of put, you can see that it's linked, right? And uh, so, you know, I'm already kind of somewhat in production here and things are kind of going on. And this is kind of warning me and I could put things on hold or I could uh, tell it to be saved for later or prevent the change from happening. So this is what's really great is that it actually uh, tells me, uh, it tells me all of the steel like and all of the changes and kind of where the steel is at. Whereas the combining module does not really give me this level of detail if you're just using something simple like a KISS file and stuff like that. So this is why I made the XML file from my tool. So that way I can use production control to actually import that in and look at this detailed change management.
Now, when I come in here, it just says, hey, uh, the reference number of 1C2 changed. Links will be broken, right? So the reference number is the prelim mark or the ABM mark. And so it's just saying that, hey, because uh, this, this instance of this piece actually changed one of those, like I actually have to break that link of the material and I'm going to have to go back and relook at, uh, you know, kind of my available material that's now uh, going to be available because I because I changed the profile on one of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, OK, and see what I get. So I get the more detailed log here and let's just compare it. Let's see if things make sense here. Uh, the assembly 1B1S changes. So it went from a quantity of 20 to 18 and it deleted a quantity of two. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. There's 1B1, there's 1B1. So I have two instances of these red lines here. So two of those have been deleted. So that makes sense. And uh, if we look at uh, the 1B1s, like one of these other ones where it just says quantity change 20 to 18, even though there was really no change on these other instances, um, but the qu overall quantity change, that confirms what I see here in PowerFab. That looks good. All right, the assembly 1C1 has changed. So it went from a quantity of 12 to 11. Let's just see if that makes sense over here. If I click on this, went from a quantity of 12 to 11. And that's right, that makes sense because of this modified column. I went from a W16 by 50 to a 12 by 53, and that created this new 1C2 mark. And that's exactly what I'm seeing here. This assembly 1C2 has changes. So it was uh, a 1C1 before, and now it became a quantity of 1C2. So there you go. This is awesome. This is actually showing me like, hey, something's going on and where is this steel already at and what's the impact of that? Now, here's the one thing that it did not do. Um, so it did show the change um, and it showed a quantity uh, deletion. But here's what would have probably been an issue if I would have completely deleted all the 1B1s out. So there was no 1B1s, then PowerFab would not have deleted the, that steel out. So that's something you have to watch out for is that if a piece mark completely disappears um, out of the model and doesn't exist anymore, um, well, then that's not gonna be imported in the subsequent imports. And so that actually might not show as a, a, you know, a true deletion. So that's something we'd actually have to test. I might just test that just to see what happens and uh, see what PowerFab will actually do with that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do that last uh, insane change where I'm gonna get rid of all the 1B1s in the model. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna delete that out and then I'll perform numbering here and I'm gonna run a Rev2 ABM. And I won't go through all those steps, but I'll run a Rev2 ABM and then let's go take a look at the change management on that and compare that also to the PowerFab import and see how it goes. Okay, so let's launch the ABM comparison tool. Let's go to original parts, which is going to be the Rev1 comparison now, since we already processed uh, Rev0 to Rev1. Now we're gonna do the original parts are Rev1, new parts are going to be Rev2, and then we'll say compare. And sure enough, there we go. Like it actually shows all the deletions. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I have 18 deletions and that makes sense. That's exactly what I did. So that full quantity should now ultimately be gone. And that's why we also don't see a quantity change uh, like a notification that's yellow here because I deleted all of the 1B1s. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say save updated uh, build material and that will be the Rev2 and let's see what happens. So really all this is, is this is just one big massive deletion. So let's see how that ends up working out over in PowerFab. Okay, so fingers crossed here. Let's see what happens when I bring into PowerFab. So I'll go to imports, select on the XML, and this time we will do Rev2. I'll go ahead and say import here. I'll choose the same job, add and replace the ABM import, okay. And uh, okay, so look at this. It's actually showing that there's really uh, no new changes here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say continue and uh, say okay. And you'll see here that like it doesn't show any change log. And this is exactly what I was worried about. And what you have to pay attention to um, when you're a detailer submitting to the fabricator, you kind of need to tell them that there's going to be deletions. Now they'll they'll eventually find this, right? So they'll eventually find that there's deletions, but early, you know, like if you're waiting till out for approval or out for fabrication, they're going to have already purchased this material. So if you can do a revised ABM, you know, before they actually purchase uh, this particular mill run, you know, for this uh, set of sizes that were deleted, 
then you can save some money, right? Like for the for the fabricator versus them having to take that, put it back in stock, especially if it's not common sizes or lengths, or sell that back to the mill if they've already actually purchased and received it. And this is why certain fabricators want to get revised ABMs because they want to make sure that they can minimize the amount of wasted material, uh, especially material that can't be reused very easily in stock and things like that on another job. So I'm going to close this down and let's just check this out and make sure that things are right as I expected. If I go into that production control job, there they still are. See, there's the 18 1B1s. Now, I want you to really understand this. So this is telling you that even though I submitted an XML type export, the PFXT type export, and it's GUID based, so it's based on the unique identifiers of the objects in the model, because it really can't uh, you know, tell whether or not you're submitting the whole model again in a subsequent import, it looks like here that it purely deals with deletions based on a quantity change from something say greater to smaller or smaller to greater when a mark already exists. But when you have a condition like this, where all of the 1B1s disappeared, there really isn't a quantity change from 18 to zero because there's no record in the updated file of those any of those 18 pieces because they were all deleted out of the model. So they don't exist and they're not coming in in this rev two. So this is just something super important to make sure you understand in that why deletion reports are so uh, critical for the detailer to make sure that they communicate properly to the fabricator um, if that fabricator needs a lot of revised uh, advanced bills throughout the course of the job. Again, my name is Chris Kiak with Kiak Technology Solutions, and thanks for watching this video on the ABM workflow from Tecla Structures to Tecla PowerFab. I'm a Tecla Structures consultant, and I have a lot of years of experience in working both on the detailing side and fabrication side and helping companies ensure that they're getting consistency and the right data from detailing into fabrication. If you're in need of that help, as well as outlining some procedure documents for submittals from detailers to you as the fabricator, please feel free to reach out to me and we'll be more than happy to help.